of the board of uh, Nigeria American Chamber of Commerce that are present here, as well as uh, uh, the Chevron representative, Mr. Rufa Medusa, that is going to give us uh, a presentation today. Mr. Rufa Medusa is, is already with us. When he's about to speak, I will just read out a short bio for him. But meanwhile, may I recognize the national president of the Nigeria American Chamber of Commerce, the okay. Madam Deborah Williams, is here with us. Uh, Madam President, you are welcome. We also Thank you. Have, uh, yes, we also have Mr. Emmanuel Lefutayo, who is the vice president of the chamber, is here with us. Ambassador Adibayo Idowu is from the board and chairman of government and international liaison committee is here with us. Um, I will continue to recognize our board members as I identify them and uh, we'll move them to uh, the panelist section so that they can see the proceedings better. Uh, so we please migrate, and go please migrate all board members that have mentioned the panelist session. That said and done, may I only call on uh, the national president of the chamber, once again, the Madibala Williams, to give us a brief welcome remarks. National president, please. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Director General. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Our presenter of today, members of the board of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce, our team members from Chevron, Nigeria. It's my pleasure and delight to welcome us all to this webinar today that is jointly sponsored by Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce and Chevron. The topic of our webinar for today is the role of natural gas in the energy transition. The role of natural gas in the energy trans transition to be delivered by our guest speaker, who will be duly introduced later. I have no doubt that um, all of us are keenly aware of what is going on in the energy sector worldwide. These days, people are talking about renewable energy, green energy, and all the rest. And Nigeria cannot be different from where the rest of the world is headed. And therefore, we need to start putting our act together. Even though Nigeria is one of the greatest oil, Niger oil, um, oil producing nations in the world, being a member of OPEC, we need to question and query ourselves on what we have done with the oil that we've been so much blessed with. However, it is our hope that as the world begins to head in the direction of um, renewable energy, Nigeria is not going to be different. Globally, oil prices have gone above $80 per barrel. Ordinarily, this should have been a blessing to a lot of countries, but I do not personally think we could say the same for Nigeria. What with the level of oil that we import, and this has continued to astound a lot of people the world over that how can a, a, a country as blessed with oil as Nigeria, we will continue to pay heavily and subsidize oil from the importation. Well, our hope is that sooner than later, 
all these anomalies will be rectified. We have been in the energy sector for decades. And a lot of situations have been thrown up. As I said, we continue to import oil despite the huge production you know, that we have. My hope and belief is that at this webinar today, our guest speaker is going to throw light into what and what Nigeria can do with its huge resource of natural gas. As I said, Mr. Olufemi Odushote, our guest speaker today, who is the strategy and business performance person for Nigeria and Mid-Africa, the business unit for Chevron, is going to make a presentation and he will lead discussions today. And my hope and belief is that many of us are going to participate actively and um, so at this point, let me formally welcome him, although he's still going to be welcomed by the DG later on. So Femi, I welcome you. Femi is no stranger to myself. Um, we, we hope that we are going to gain fully from your presentation this morning. I also want to use this opportunity to appreciate Chevron Nigeria for their continuous support of the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. Chevron and Nigerian American Chamber have been partners for a long time. It dates back. And um, to the extent that the current MD, we have always reserved a slot for the MD of um, Chevron on our board. And the current MD, Richard Kennedy, is a vice chairman on the board. I thank Chevron for all that you have done for the chamber and all you will continue to do. And it is our hope that the relationship would continue to thrive. Finally, let me thank again our distinguished members who are present today, both from Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce and Chevron. And we are really appreciative that you can spare this time to attend this webinar. So on this note, ladies and gentlemen, I wish all of us a happy participation and a fruitful deliberation and interaction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the national president, the Adebola Williams. Right now, we have 94 on the participation list. And like I said, as we are able to recognize other members from our board or from the Chevron top echelon, we will be waiting to, to recognize them. Now, uh, we will go to the guest speaker's presentation. Our guest speaker today, as uh, the national president has said, is uh, Mr. Olufemi Obishote, who is the manager of strategy and business performance for Nigeria slash Middle Africa business unit for Chevron Middle East Africa and South America region. He will make a presentation on the role of natural gas in the United transition. Prior to Olufemi's current position, he was manager deep water reservoir engineering he joined Chevron in 2005 as a petroleum engineer and has since then held numerous engineering and marine positions of increasing responsibility in Nigeria and the United States of America during his career at Chevron. He received his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Lagos in 1999. He has a master's degree in engineering from Pennsylvania State University in the U.S. in 2003. He has another master's degree in business administration from Pennsylvania State University in 2005. He's happily married with children. As I said before, this event is totally and fully 
supported and sponsored by Chevron. So you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Badimo. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, actually I do well. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would also like to share my screen. Uh, thank you. So thank you, thank you very much, and, and thank you for you know the introduction. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to speak to uh, to the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. Um, I think um, you know it's it's, a, it's an honor for me to be honest, and and also want to thank the leadership of the. Uh, the chamber for all you do to create value for all your members through sessions such as these where we learn and we can interact on on key issues that impact uh, you know both our countries i do also want to recognize the you know leaders from chevron who are on the call as well and also other participants and colleagues from chevron um, so today as, as has been said i will be speaking on the role of natural gas in energy transition um, and, you know, as I plan to do today, I just want to share my outline, I'll speak, I know I've been introduced, but I'll go into a bit more detail, you know, about myself and you know, especially why, you know, I feel like I am um, in particular, you know, although I wouldn't consider myself uh, an expert in the topic industry to, to this topic and hopefully we can learn a, a thing or two at, at the end of the day, and I'll be able to shed some light, as has been said, on, on this topic. And so I'll be speaking on the global energy landscape and the energy transition. I will speak a bit on what lower carbon is and what it means for us, especially in Chevron, and then also talk about this transition to, to a lower carbon future and the role of gas. And then at the end of the day, kind of summarize with some closing thoughts. I hope to I have some time at the end to, to take uh, questions and have a discussion um, at the end of it all. And so, as has been said, you know, I, I'm an engineer. That's my background. I also have graduate degrees in engineering and business. Um, I'm also a registered engineer um, with, uh, uh, with the Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria and a member of the SPE and the Nigerian Society of Engineers. I've spent, you know, all my life working in the energy industry, starting from my internships, you know, youth core. I uh, spent some time working with the uh, Department of Energy in the USA uh, during my graduate program, uh, and I've been with Chevron for, you know, um, you know, close to 17 years now overall. And I've worked in many functions. I've worked as a production engineer, as a reservoir engineer, worked in, in simulation, worked, you know, offshore in operations as well. Um, in Escravos, and I'm, I'm currently working, as has been said, as the manager of strategy and business performance for, for the business unit. Um, always, you know, uh, you know, participating in, in, you know, things that bring more knowledge to us in, in the country. And I've, you know, been involved in, in writing and co-authoring technical papers published by the SPE. Um, I've been a member of the board of the SPE at some point and also um, participated as a, a paper reviewer you know, for one of the conferences that we have here in Nigeria for the SPE. And so that's really, you know, kind of my background. As I said, I have, you know, uh, a number of years of experience in the industry. And I spent some time in the last couple of years really delving into this concept of energy transition and, and you know, what lower carbon means for us in, 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 as a business in, in Nigeria, but also what it means for, for us, you know, as, uh, as an industry globally. And so, you know, overall, you know, what I would like to start with is that, you know, the world needs energy. Uh, we all know that there's a growing demand for, you know, energy overall. And this chart I'm showing on the right here speaks to that, that fact. And so this is coming from the International Energy Agency and also some studies done by Wood McKenzie, a consulting company. Um, it's showing really for, you know, developing economies, especially, there's going to be a growing demand for energy as we look, you know, decades ahead, even into 2040. Because these economies such as Nigeria need to continue to develop and they need energy to grow their economies. Also, we see rising population and increasing access to energy for economies in Africa and Asia. You know, um, those tend to offset, you know, the slow, the slow down in demand by the developed economies. Um, I, I'm getting some feedback. Uh, if you don't mind, if you can mute yourself if you're not uh, speaking. 
Um, and so also the energy growth is seen in all sectors, um, in power generation, in industrial you know, uh, companies, in transportation, and in buildings and other sectors. And so it's not just you know, in transportation alone, it's across board, we see that demand for energy growing you know, uh, through, through the years and uh, looking all the way to 2040. Um, also, you know, there's something uh, we call the energy mix. Although renewables are growing, you know, and we expect that uh, energy supplied by wind and solar would increase, you know, three times faster than, you know, uh, hydrocarbons, you know, over the next few years. But we see that hydrocarbons are still going to be a big part of the energy mix, even if you look all the way to 2050. And so this chart is also part of some studies that have been done and is showing, you know, the energy, uh, the energy uh, demand over time, you know, all the way to 2050. And as you can see, the top part of this chart is showing um, kind of the renewables, the zero carbon sources of energy, although we see that growth from where we are today to that point, but we see things like oil, you know, natural gas, and even coal still being relevant, you know, way into the future. We see electrification as an emerging, an emerging transformational theme where electric vehicles, although they pose a significant threat to, you know, kind of to oil demand, um, but as we are getting more efficient and we are looking at more energy efficient vehicles, those efficiencies in one end are going to be offset, you know, by those efficiencies we see in, in the other space. And so, as I said, the point is we'll continue to see these hydrocarbons be a part of our future, especially as we continue to demand for energy. And, and this is not new. This transition is not new. Um, energy markets are always in transition. Uh, and the pace of that change is dictated by the pace of technology, adoption, uh, policy, and also consumer behavior. And so this graphic is showing, you know, kind of from looking from 1900, where coal and biomass were the order of the day. At that time, oil was, you know, um, just in early discovery and primarily used for lighting. And so fast forward to 1965, after both world wars and you know, economies are getting into development, oil has been discovered, there's major industrialization. And so oil and gas started being used globally for energy, transportation, and even aviation. And so you start seeing coal, you know, reducing in relevance and oil taking over and natural gas also playing more of a relevant role. We start seeing around that 1965 period, um, the rise of renewables, but not so much. And, you know, biomass, sort of like burning of, you know, firewood and, and the like, is reducing in relevance because we have more efficient forms of energy. Fast forward again to 2017, uh, we start seeing things like hydro and nuclear and renewables gaining ground. And but we see that natural gas is also growing from where we were previously. Oil is starting to shrink, and we're seeing natural gas growing. And then coal continues to be on the decline, although it's still being a big part of the energy mix. And so the point I'm making here is that this transition continues to happen. And we expect that, you know, as the world evolves, we're going to continue to see a rise in some of those other forms of energy. Uh, but it's going to be that continuous mix as we, as we continue to move forward in time. And so what is lower carbon all about? And, and really, you know, as I've said before, the world will continue to need affordable, which is a key word, affordable, reliable, and ever cleaner energy. And so we believe that energy is essential to modern life. No, no one can argue with that. And also we believe that human ingenuity fuels innovation and so innovation is critical. And we also believe that lower carbon is our future and that we are, as you know, industry practitioners, as leaders, we carry a great responsibility to ensure that we continue to be, you know, um, have this mindset as we continue to supply the demand, uh, supply the energy that the world needs. And so, you know, we in Chevron, we talk about higher returns and lower carbon. So we want to be part of this lower carbon story. But at the end of the day, we also have a business. And so we want to make sure that we're, you know, um, doing both at the same time. And we believe that that is possible. Um, we are focusing on growing our lower carbon and new energies business. Uh, we want to lead in advancing a, a lower carbon future. And so that's what we're looking to do. Um, and so this chart also is, is, is really, you know, kind of re-emphasizing the point. On the left, I'm showing that even as we go forward into 2040, all the different views, all the different studies that have been done continue to show that even though renewables are growing quickly, you know, um, the, also the hydrocarbons will be part of that story going forward. But we do need to be 
more efficient in how we are using that and how we are impacting the environment. On the right chart, I'm showing how we are making progress in Chevron, you know, through data-driven investments, through innovations and public policy. We are proving that we can actually reduce the impact of, uh, you know, impact on our environment. And we've demonstrated that and we continue to demonstrate that going into the future. In Nigeria, we're also committed to reducing flaring and carbon emissions. We continue to invest in our operations to improve our environmental performance while working with the industry to develop new innovations and best practices. You know, we believe that reducing flaring and carbon emissions, it makes good environmental sense and it also makes good business sense. And we've made a lot of significant progress to date. We have a gas strategy that is focused on reducing flaring and building a profitable gas business. And so back to that theme of you have to be profitable or you can do it by being a good steward of the environment as well. And so we do have a portfolio of projects that fulfill our domestic gas supply obligations. Uh, Chevron Nigeria Limited has reduced flaring by over 95% over the past 10 years and has remained the top supplier of gas to the domestic market. And so this gas I'm speaking about, what is the role of gas? And why is gas so important? I spoke about how natural gas has increased in relevance over the past few decades. And so what, what is making that even more important is that natural gas is cleaner. And so why that is happening is that the three things, the first of all is that natural gas is cleaner and more efficient than oil or coal. And so we see that. Also, we see that there's an abundance of natural gas. Uh, Mrs. Williams spoke earlier about Nigeria being rich in resources. And so we are rich, you know, more so in natural gas um, in resources in Nigeria. And it also has a global reach. We have pipelines and, you know, now we have LNG that takes this natural gas from one country to another. And so we have this global reach for this abundance of gas resources. Uh, and lastly, as a fuel, gas is, is consistently cheaper than other forms of fuel. And so I want to go into a bit more detail on these three reasons why natural gas makes sense. You know, um, and so in terms of being clean, natural gas generates fewer harmful emissions. And so, you know, uh, you know, the emissions are made up of water vapor and carbon dioxide, you know, but in efficient power plants, it gives us about 50 to 60% less carbon dioxide emissions than traditional coal plants and up to 30% less than oil. And so, so it's much cleaner than you know, traditional forms of hydrocarbon. Um, it produces less uh, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide, you know, things that you know, harm the environment. And so it makes it an even ever cleaner you know, uh, choice you know, for the environment. Secondly, natural gas is more efficient than other forms of fuel, fossil fuels. It produces more energy than any of the other uh, fossil fuels. It's 92% you know, um, efficiency rate you know, compared to electricity generated by coal. And so if you're using natural gas, you get more for less. You know, it is also very cost efficient. Um, and in, in, uh, as a fossil fuel abundant in the US, for example, um, there are reports that around 90% of the natural gas you know, consumed you know, comes from within the country. So it makes it more efficient for them there where they're taking gas you know, to the power plants and they're not having to import so much. And so that's something that we want to emulate here back home. Natural gas also helps other alternative energy efforts. And so beyond its use as a direct source of energy, it's being used in other ways in the quest for clean energy. According to the American Gas Association, you know, natural gas is used and is usable to create green materials such as you know, plastics, lightweight cars, cars, even the power blades used in, uh, in, in, wind, in, in wind farms and solar panels all have some of uh, you know, the, the natural gas being produced can be used to make some of those things. You know, the methane in natural gas is also being used to make hydrogen power. Uh, and lastly, natural gas is fully inter interchangeable with biogas. And so, you know, you mix the renewable gas with natural gas to kind of reduce the emissions intensity and create this more renewable source, you know, as a whole. Um, and so it creates a, a more partially, uh, what we call a partially, partially renewable process overall. And so we feel like, or oh, I believe that, you know, one of the reasons why we are pushing towards natural gas is because it's cleaner than, you know, other forms of uh, fossil fuels. Secondly, as I said, and as, as we mentioned, uh, you know, there's also an abundance of natural gas resources. And so here in Nigeria, you know, we're seeing that we have one of the largest reserves of natural gas, and we rank ninth globally improved natural gas reserves. Proven gas deposits in Nigeria has moved, you know, according to the DPR, for, you know, to about 207 trillion cubic feet as of June of 2021. 
And this accounts for about 3% of the world's total natural gas reserves. And so we do have an abundance of gas resources. You know, but the chart I'm showing on the right shows that we're consuming, you know, locally about 25% of the gas that we, we actually even produce to date. And we market another 25%, and about 50% of that gas is either re-injected or flared. There's a lot of projects that actually use that gas re-injected either for, you know, uh, enhanced oil recovery, pressure maintenance, you know, but a lot of it is still flared, unfortunately. There's a lot of work being done in that space. And I've given an example of what we're doing in Chevron, Nigeria to, to reduce the flares and make sure we're utilizing a lot of this, you know, goes to our production that we have. And the last point uh, as to why we're moving to natural gas is that, you know, it's, it's consistently cheaper. Natural gas vehicles are far more energy efficient, you know, as our other engines power by it, and it makes them cheaper to run in the long run. Or even in Nigeria, there's been examples of the push towards, you know, uh, you know using gas for vehicles. I know the government is pushing programs in that space as well. It is also, as you, as you know, it's also the most useful in homes for heating and cooking purposes. All of us have gas cookers in our homes, you know, and I find that the efficient transport system and, and minimal storage costs results overall in lower energy costs for, for natural gas. Energy cost of LNG uh, and natural gas per kilowatt hour is, is normally lower than alternative energy from, from the grid or oil, you know, or coal and other gases. So it is really, um, you know, helps us lower overall cost of energy. And so, you know, giving three reasons, I said it's cheaper, it's abundant, um, and it's also cleaner. And so I think that's why you see that push to, towards natural gas. Um, and so that transition, how does it happen? And what is required to make that transition? Now we're speaking about this in a, a little bit. And so there are three key things. First of all, you need effective policy direction. Uh, we need to create policies that are balanced, practical, and flexible that help us in this transition to lower carbon. Secondly, we need global partnerships and collaboration across board towards lower carbon emissions and also climate change. And this is already happening. And lastly, we need to have enhanced gas utilization with a focus on areas with significant multiplier effects. If we want to move quickly, we have to focus on those key areas. And I will go into a bit more detail about these in the next few slides. And so, you know, as, as I said, global partnerships uh, and effective policy direction is required. You know, uh, the Paris Agreement on the one hand, you know, represents an international consensus, and that's a good example. Um, you know, making provisions, adapting, you know, ensuring that all the countries that are signed into this, you know, agreement are moving things along and adapting those policies and practices and making it, you know, localizing those and ensuring that we are all working towards the same, same goals. And even businesses are, are plugged into that agreement and are moving things along in that direction. And so this needs to be emphasized. You know, effective policies need to also be emphasized and put in place to help us move, you know, in the direction which you go in lower carbon. Also, you know, we need to have enhanced gas utilization. I'm showing an example of what we're doing in Chevron. We continue to enhance gas utilization with a focus on these areas that have significant multiplier effects. You know, uh, we have you know, uh, gas sale agreements, you know, with, you know, power plants here in Nigeria. You know, the chart I'm showing on the left is showing, you know, our sub-regional gas supply program with the West African Gas Pipeline Project that transports up to 475 million cubic feet of gas through Nigeria to Benin, to Benin, Togo, and Ghana, supplying power, you know, supplying the needed gas to, you know, to, to support the power plants in, in those countries. And so we need to do more of this. Even in fertilizer production for local consumption, we have some agreements signed with uh, Dangote Fertilizer Limited. And so we're doing a lot with the gas that we're producing in Nigeria, and we continue to push you know, efforts in that space. And so some of the closing thoughts uh, that I'll just summarize you know, my talk with, you know, uh, first of all, the world needs energy, you know, as I said. The energy demand will continue to keep rising through 2040, and this demand growth is seen across all sectors. Secondly, the, the future of energy is lower carbon. We really need to buy into this, and we all have a vital role to play in providing the energy the world needs and also in protecting the environment. As I said, natural gas plays a key role in this transition to this lower carbon future. It's cleaner, it's abundant, and it's cheaper. Effective policies, uh, global partnerships, uh, and enhanced gas utilization are really key to unlocking the value of gas and making this transition that we all know is going to happen. 
uh, and Nigeria has a large untapped gas resource, and I've mentioned that a number of times. You know, but it would require significant infrastructure investment to continue to bring that to market. You know, we're doing a lot in Chevron, but across the country, we need to continue to invest in those pipelines, invest in those power plants to really use the resources that we have, you know, to create value for the country and also our partners across the world. Nigeria would need to establish investor confidence in order to compete for capital. And so for you to attract the billions required for this infrastructure investment, you need to establish that investor confidence. And that would enable capital, you know, coming to the country and also enable growth. There's a multiplier effect there. And lastly, Chevron, you know, supports the drive for affordable, reliable, and ever cleaner energy and has been making significant investments in, in Nigeria for decades you know, and across the world, to be honest, and is an active participant in building a secure gas future in Nigeria and across Af Africa. You know, um, this is the summary of what I'm, I'm, I'm saying today, and I really hope you're taking one or two things out of that. Um, I would end there and thank you all for your attention and open the floor for any questions or, or comments um, as we continue this discourse. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Odishote. Um, that was quite brilliant. Um, so now, as he has said, the floor is now open for questions and comments. Uh, from, you can also look at the chat and respond to some of the uh, comments there from Eneka Arnole for. For local gas consumption, security is a key consideration as it affects distribution. Um, the others are mainly complementary. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, security, if you have anything to say there, I don't know. That, um, so, but, so uh, the, mm -hmm. yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so I was just going to say, you know, I, I talked about significant infrastructure investments and investor confidence and, and, and really security is a key part of that. Um, nobody's going to bring in hundreds of millions of dollars to invest in, in, in an area that you know, uh, their investment is not secure or that uh, pipelines have challenges and you, know, you can't actually get things done. And so it is a, a key part of it and it's recognized. So I totally agree with, uh, with that comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we have more coming in, although, like I said, most of them are complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I don't know if any of the, our panelists have anything else to ask any of our board members um, before we move ahead. Um, I, somebody is asking for the slide. You may send something to us after the after the presentation as a deem suitable, uh, Mr. Aldishete. Okay. How do you ensure we move our rural women to use gas rather than firewood? Is that not a matter of affordability? Yeah. So I, I think you know one of the things I mentioned earlier is about affordable. Right, and so for you to transition, it has to be affordable. And I do recognize that you know in, in the rural, rural areas, affordability is is uh, is challenged. Uh, but overall, I think it's a, it's a key point. If you don't make that energy affordable, it it it, uh, it secludes a, a sector of the development developing world. Um, I do know there's conversations around, you know, even for solar, wind, and renewable energy because they tend to be a bit more expensive. That's one of the challenges of adoption of some of those things going forward because you want to have affordable energy. And, uh, you know, and I think that's, uh, that's a good point. You know, so in terms of how I think, you know, it's, it's more of a, you know, a, a government type question, but I think, you know, they just need to be encouraged um, and supported and even subsidized to, to access that, that energy. Thank you. There are two interesting questions. One, how is FG and IOC stepping up to tap the deep water gas resources? And another one, what strategies will show up the warning investor interest as driven by influence of ESG investors? 
Okay. Uh, the, the third one, what do you consider the biggest barriers for Nigeria accelerating her energy transition? And then somebody spoke about uh, alternative energy, solar wind, but I know you mentioned that earlier. So you may start with um, the FG and IOC stepping up to start the deep water gas. Also. Okay, so I can't really speak for, for the federal government, um, but, but for the IOCs and, and to be, and I can't speak for other IOCs also, uh, but for Chevron, I know there's a lot of work we're doing to, um, to advocate, you know, um, for things like, you know, uh, better terms, you know, ensuring that we have kind of market reflective prices for, for our gas so that those projects that we do know we have, so we have the resources, those, those projects that bring those resources to fruition have to be economic. They have to make business sense or you will not attract that capital. So we're doing a lot of advocacy and I know not just Chevron, other IOCs are advocating a lot for, you know, cost reflective pricing for gas and also, you know, just ensuring that they support, you know, and create this investor confidence, um, you know, to attract that capital. And so once those things happen, I believe that the capital for those projects start to happen. Things like uh, floating LNG projects, you know, major pipelines or hub, you know, um, hub uh, projects that bring, you know, a lot of that deep water, you know, resource to, to, uh, to the domestic markets where it's, it's, it's really needed. And so those are the comments I'll make to that. In terms of uh, strategies to show up uh, winning investor interest um, as driven by the influence of ESG investors, I think our message really is the future is, is lower carbon. As I, I spoke about the energy mix going forward. So we have to respect the environment, but we have to show that we are you know, putting strategies or we have strategies in place that also, you know, um, consider, you know, the future, you know, which is lower carbon. We're talking about investments in, in renewables, investments in new energies. And Chevron as a company is participating in, in all of that space. We have in about uh, overall globally about $10 billion committed till 2028 in, 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 in lower carbon initiatives and in um, focusing on, on new energies and trying to, you know, just make sure we're part of that story going forward. Um, so, so those are my comments there. Um, in terms of uh, the biggest barriers for Nigeria, you know, accelerating her energy transition, you know, again, I spoke about, you know, you know, uh, establishing investor confidence and there's a lot of advocacy going on in that space um, and also significant infra infrastructure investment that is required to, to get us, to get the gas that we know we have to where it needs to be, right? And, and ensure that people it makes good business sense. And so I think I've said that like five times already today, but it, it, begs, it begs repeating so that we can get, you know, the right people, you know, hearing this message. Um, so there's a question here around is Chevron, I want to know if Chevron is making any efforts, you know, towards renewable energy, such as solar or wind. You know, our, our strategy in Chevron really is, um, is multifold. And so we would continue to, be in the oil and gas space, but we're doing it more efficiently, you know, doing it in a, in a more environmentally friendly way. We're transitioning to gas and, you know, uh, you know making those investments. We do have announced uh, what we call a new energies company. And that energies company is focused on things like renewable fuels, renewable gas, renewable diesel, you know, sustainable aviation fuels, you know, all of those things we're, uh, we're investing in and we're partnering in. Um, We've announced a lot of several good partnerships in that, in that space. And that new energies company is focused on, you know, bringing those things to market and making sure it makes business sense, like I said earlier. And so we're, we're playing in that space, not so much solar and wind, um, you know, but we're focused on new energies as, you know, um, as a primary focus. Um, so we are not, um, and, and we also have announcements that we've made around where we want to be by 2050, or we want to be by 2030 in terms of, our, you know, our emissions reductions and our net zero ambitions. And so we're, we're all, um, you know, uh, doing a lot in that space for, for Chevron. Uh, so thank you for that question. Um, looking through, to see if there are... Can I also look at the Q&A? Mm -hmm. Have you addressed the natural hydrogen um, question? What is Chevron doing regarding natural hydrogen 
around the world. Any prospects for Nigeria? Okay. So, not in Nigeria, but globally, Chevron is, uh, you know, is playing in that space. We, we do have, um, you know, hydrogen production uh, programs, and we're, we're playing in that space as well, uh, in the global, but not in Nigeria. Um, we to... Okay. The more, what system does this? industry have in eliminating fugitive natural gas emission. As natural gas has 20 times damaging effect, uh, more than carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. I, I, don't, I don't know whether that is correct. Um, then somebody spoke about gas flaring. What is Chevron doing again? Okay. Gas flaring, whether they are investing in that area. So, so I can I can take that. So, in terms of uh, you know gas flaring, you know I, I mentioned that in in our Chevron Nigeria Limited, we've reduced gas flares by about ninety five percent over the last ten years, right? Uh, we you know we continue to look at the areas where we have flares, and we do have projects that are aimed at geared at reducing those flares and taking to a bit, taking it to a bare uh, minimum. Um, so that's what we're doing in the gas flaring space. We do have significant gas projects and we have the Escravos gas plant. We do also have a, a gas to liquids plant where we take the gas and convert them into usable products like diesel and nafta and uh, sell that. And so that plant alone is taking about, you know, uh, almost 300 million cubic feet of gas out of, you know, um, out of that space where we would normally just either fair or reject or sometimes not even produce that gas at all. So there's a lot Chevron is doing that we continue to plan to do over the next few years. Okay, somebody spoke about compressed natural gas for vehicles. Okay. Is Chevron playing any role here in that? Um, so, you know, okay, so I think there was a question on fugitive uh, gas emissions. Um, so, fugitive gas emissions are, you know, are things that, you know, in, in our pipelines and in our systems, you know, we do have a program or programs in place to ensure that we bring that down. Um, you know, we have technologies to identify those. Um, and we continue to do that, especially in Chevron. I think it's something that we, we play a, a key emphasis on. Um, I think the, the next question, because I'm going down the Q&A list. Um, I think there's a question around um, taking advantage of the PIA. So I, from what I know of the PIA, I think there's uh, there's also a focus on ensuring that we utilize our gas and, and make sure that we are not impacting the environment. And so the PIA as a law accounts for that. And we are going to obviously obey the law and go above and beyond to ensure that we are moving, moving uh, in, in the right direction there. Um, in terms of infrastructure development, obviously, you know, they, they want to encourage investment through that act. Uh, Chevron is a part of that. And we're operating in this country and we would, you know, align ourselves with what Nigeria wants to do in that space. Uh, on the, you know, it says at the IUC is partnering with uh, with the federal government on the transition to compress natural gas for vehicles. Um, you know, I would say, you know, I can't really speak to that. You know, for other IOCs, we produce the gas, um, and that's what we're focused on. And you know, our upstream mainstream company, we produce, you know, uh, a significant amount of gas that we supply to the domestic market. Uh, and it's hoped that as we continue to build that domestic gas, you know, market, uh, there will be more uses for that natural gas uh, going forward. Okay. You know, I, I don't know how we're doing in time, so I'm just going to continue going down the list here. So uh, uh, just, just, know. just go on. Okay. Um, just go on. All right. And so it says that the IUC is partnering with the federal government on the transition. Okay, I think I've answered that. Um, it talks about uh, Chevron collaborating with the federal government to have enough gas to advance electricity su sufficiency. And so as I said, you know, uh, enough gas, we do have enough gas, it's the abundance of gas resources. And so, you know, when, where, where we have a role to play, we will play that role. I mentioned earlier that we do supply gas to the domestic uh, gas market, supplying a couple of power plants, and we'll continue to do our part to ensure you know uh, uh, that the gas is available uh, to support the plans of the federal government um 
Someone says, I learned that some IOCs are planning to sell off their offshore investments. That is really out of scope. Um, but, but what is Chevron doing you know, concerning energy transition? I think that's what this whole presentation is all about, right? I think you know, we, we will continue to um, look for ways to uh, provide affordable, reliable, and ever cleaner energy to, to Nigeria and to the world at large. There's a question that says, looking at how Qatar has transformed their economy through gas, in what way can Nigeria maximize our gas reserves? I, I believe I, I've mentioned that a number of times. You know, we do need to enhance our gas utilization, uh, make sure that we're harnessing that gas to create value. But it has to make business sense. You know, and I think that's where, that's where you know, we can unlock that value. You know, um, investors have many choices as to where they take their money to. Um, there's a lot of places where money can go. And if you don't, you know, uh, create a, a viable vehicle for that money to earn a decent return, then it will be a struggle to, to attract that capital. Um, I think that's where, that's where you know, one of the keys um, are. Okay. Uh, I've been, right. I've gone through the q and um, I would yeah. take another look at the, the, um, at the chat. The chat. Um, yeah. It says, what is Chevron doing to enlighten our rural women in using gas in their natural villages and their enlightenment programs for safety measures put in place for the continued uh, usage? Um, you know, I would say we, we do have a lot of uh, community facing programs. Um, you know, I can't really speak to some of these you know, particulars, but I know we are engaged in the communities where we operate and we continue to encourage them. You know, I know we have you know, programs that encourage the use of even solar as well. We have programs that help them invest in, in solar, you know, uh, you know, solar energy to support some of their you know, small scale businesses. Uh, and I, I think we'll continue to do that going forward. So, so thank you, thank you much, uh, thank you very much, everyone. I think the questions are, you know, it kind of shows kind of where, where you know, where we are thinking, um, and also you know highlights kind of the what we need to continue to focus on as an industry and also as a as a people in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Uh, I would hand back over to you now. Oh, okay. Um, welcome back. Um... Actually, this has been overwhelming. We have about 10, 130 participants at the point, fluctuating between 120 and 130. And the comment section has been overwhelmed with um, contributions, some of them quite complementary of the quality of the presentation. Uh, so that was uh, quite excellent. Back to the, we have, uh, additional comments. So, meanwhile, may I also uh, acknowledge the fact that there are some people uh, also here yeah, that I didn't mention earlier. This is Eileen Cheyen, is the chairman of our program, Science Strategic Planning Committee, in charge of all chambers programs, including this. Um, you are welcome, Mr. Uh, Cheyen. We have uh, one of uh, um, the Chevron family, Mr. Joseph Adi, who I understand is the Global Advisor for Social Performance. I stand to be corrected. Uh, Mr. Zumi Okiki, you are welcome. The Secretary General of the International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Arek Amaruddin Adao, Banjima, you are welcome. One of our notable members. Um, the floor, any comments from the panel? the panelists before we um, try and wind up. Our time schedule for this program is about an hour. And we have spent 53 minutes. There are none. Uh, may I call on Ambassador Adebayo to, to, to say a short vote of thanks uh, in appreciation of this subject. Thank you, DG. Good morning again. And uh, uh, all the panelists and participants, looking at the comments from the, the participation, I am delighted that uh, I'm given a, 
a very easy task to, to, to accomplish. I've seen different comments from the participants. Well done, Femi, brilliant presentation, clear and uh, precise and straightforward. So with all these comments, I, I have the confidence to, to thank Mr. Femi Odushote for a job well done. And for the fact that uh, those of us who have, may not have known much about the gas uh, industry have been given uh, some information, some valuable information. That Nigeria, we have fewer uh, carbon emissions, which means it's uh, compliant with the uh, current environmental trends. Uh, it it, uh, it uh, emits uh, less poisonous gases. Some of the things we learned, it produces more energy, it's more cost efficient, and it complements other sources of uh, energy. And it's very, very relevant, talking about the topic, the role of natural gas in the energy transition. Gas is very relevant in the energy transition, and Nigeria has a lot of gas. So we have hope in that direction. So having said this, uh, I, I, I want to convey the sentiments of the national president and the board, and indeed all participants on this uh, program today to Mr. Odushote for a great presentation. And also to convey to the Chevron uh, establishment uh, how we value our partnership over the years and how we we'll continue to look forward to uh, continued partnership and cooperation. So our appreciation goes to uh, the Chevron management and indeed all our participants this morning, I have the uh, support of the national president to thank you all for a well attended uh, uh, webinar and to uh, encourage you to continue to participate uh, in our programs. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank members of the board and indeed the entire membership of the Nigerian American uh, Chambers for coming up, uh, for standing up to this occasion and, uh, and, and giving the, the, the house a befitting webinar. Once again, thank you very much and God bless you. DG, over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, so that it's at 11.57. Uh, uh, Madam President, do I have your, uh, go ahead to, to, to wrap up uh, this program. There are no additional. Yes. Um, thank you so much, DG. Um, I think the webinar has been most successful from every angle. And um, we have thanked Femi for his very brilliant presentation. We also have thanked the, all the participants who have created the time to attend. And um, all we can say is that, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Okay, thank you Femi, thank you to I want to touch the participants that we've had. We'll expect a short uh, um, uh, edition of your presentation to be forwarded to us for our record of the week. Uh, do we have the confirmation that that will be done? Yes, uh, I'll, I'll work with uh, uh, our okay. team here to send you something. Okay, excellent. That's excellent. So I thank you once again. We thank the panelists, we thank the board members, we thank all participants. And uh, we will forward information on our webinar for next month to you shortly. Thank you all for coming and bye bye. All right. Thank you. <laughs>